Welcome back everyone, it is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here today, back again with another educational cryptocurrency tutorial and check out what I got you guys, I got a face light, you can finally see me a little bit better, you can see how sweaty and musty I am, for real to struggle out here in Idaho, it's like 100 degrees outside, but anyways, welcome back, today's going to be lesson number 6 of the Binance Basic tutorial and today we're going to be going over trends, wedges and breakout patterns, so last week we showed you guys how to identify levels of support and resistance like we have shown here on the screen, so you can make educated decisions on your entries and exits into the market in attempts to make profit by knowing where buyer and seller resistance and support is going to be. So if you haven't watched that lesson, make sure to do that first. Or if you don't even have a Binance account set up and this is your first time doing any of this, make sure to go watch lessons one through four, where we show you how to set up your account and start moving things around. So right now I'm on the screen. I'm on the five minute chart of Bitcoin versus the US dollar tether on Binance US. And last week we already went over how to identify all these support and resistance lines. Um, so for the moment, I am going to delete all of these on the screen. So we have a fresh chart to look at here remove all drawing tools okay so here we are bitcoin versus the us dollar chart so today what we're going to be talking about are trends wedges and breakout patterns so a trend can actually be thought of as another type of support level so a trend identifies an obvious pattern in the rising price of any traded foreign currency so let me go to uh, let's see here here we go here's a good trend where we can see we are on the hourly chart now of bitcoin versus us dollar here we are back on june 24th where we had this little rise here and it looks like over the course of this movement, we gained, oh, about 2%, okay? That'd be a nice little swing trade right there. Now, this wick down here is most likely a price anomaly. And what I mean by that is typically when you have a big, long wick like that, where the body of the candle is very small, it shows that quickly there was probably some big sell orders that flashed down and then price found lots of buyer support right there. So big wicks like that usually show that there is lots of buyer support in that area. Same thing on the way up. You can see that there's a huge wick here because as price got that high, it quickly shot back down because there was lots of seller interest up top, okay? Um, so back to where we were, uh, we have this trend line tool in here where you can take two points and connect them together, creating a line on the screen. Now, like I said, this to me would be sort of a uh, wick anomaly. So I wouldn't really count that for my support or start of my uptrend. But right here, you can see that you have a swing low. Right, and this is where we identify the start of an uptrend right there. We can see we have an uptrend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag this green line with the start of an uptrend. Now you can see we went up, we came down, we came up, we came down, and you can see that we're actually following the bottoms of these wicks here. So if I draw that line there on that trend from the start where the first uptrend was, second one bounced off of it, creating two points, creating a linear trend line right here. So you only need two swing lows to identify trend, right? And obviously the more swing lows you have that are bouncing off of it, the more solidified the trend is. But right here, as you can see, we would only have needed two points, one there, and then we saw it bounce off there. So we could have drawn our trend line. And then look what happened. The third time, this trend line was acting as support. A fourth time it acted as support. A fifth time it acted as support. And then just like in the previous video, once that line is finally broken, once that support is finally broken, the floodgates open and we set another swing low. So we can see we have a trend line right there. And once the price found enough sellers to go below this trend line and break through and close out, we had a swing low there. So there's a good example of an upward trend. Now this will also work the same way on a downward trend. So let me see, let me look in my charts here and see if we can find some sort of downward trend. Okay, here we've got another one. So we can see that we had the start of a downtrend here. So we can draw our first trend line and then we need to attach it to the start of another downtrend. Here we had a little bit of a swing low, a bounce back up, and then boom, you can see we had a trend line set there. This would be a downward trend. Obviously it was tested um, once, twice, and then once it broke through, look what happened once again, just like we just saw on the opposite direction. Once that trend line was broken, we had big price action movement. So you can see, same thing right back over here. This is an upward trend tested 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 this trend line is acting as support in the previous videos our support lines were only horizontal however now we have a diagonal trend line acting as support there and acting as resistance on the way down boom resistance 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 breakthrough price action okay so there's your basic basic understanding of how trend lines work they act as support and resistance on the bottoms and tops of those trends so one way you could use these to your advantage is you could say, okay, we could see that Bitcoin was on an obvious downtrend. You could have seen some support back here. I'm gonna make that green. So here we have a line of support. And then here we would have also had a trend line going down, right? So we have two, we have a line of resistance and a line of support and the price point is converging into where they intersect. 
And then at that point, once it found enough buyer's interest, that's where it took off. So what you could do is you could attempt to buy in. You could say, okay, you can obviously see that this trend is going down. And then here we talked about periods of accumulation in last week's video. Here you can see a nice solid period of accumulation. And then as this price converged closer and closer to this intersection of these two lines, we found price action. Now it could go either direction. It's not always gonna go up. Technical analysis is not always a 100% for sure buy signal. All this is doing is giving you every piece of information you have available to you to make the most educational entry and exit points you can. So here we could have made an entry and then sure enough, you know, it, obviously if it went the opposite direction, you would have had a stop loss set there and you would have been able to stop out. And so the way you could use that is you could set an entry point where these two lines would intersect right here, okay? And we'll talk about risk to reward ratio in a future video it's a little bit of more advanced trader strategy but what i mean by that is okay let's go ahead and take a long position here and this is a little tool you can use on binance called the long position tool you can choose your entry point and then you can manually set here you can see okay this would set my stop loss you can drag these little dots here and you can say okay i want to stop loss at three percent obviously you don't want to do that much if you're day trading you maybe set it around half a percent or one percent and you'd say okay i want to take my profit at um, maybe two percent so if you had a two to one risk to reward ratio you could set it at negative one percent and two percent profit like i said this we're going to go over this in a future video it's getting a little bit more advanced but the bottom line is if you were going to enter right here you'd want to make sure to have a proper stop loss set just in case the market decided to go the opposite direction than your technical analysis told you it should go because technical analysis is not always right. So now that I've shown you how support and resistance lines and trend lines can come together to create price action, I've actually already shown you what the second topic in this video is, which is wedges, trends, wedges, and breakout patterns. And we actually already talked about the third as well. This would be considered a breakout pattern. And so what a wedge is, is if you think of it like a triangle, right? A wedge, that's what shape we have right here. We have a giant wedge. All right. So obviously we can see here, we have a downtrend converging onto this support support and then boom that is why they're calling it a wedge you see that shape right there so as price gets diverged into the corner of this wedge and then enters a period of accumulation sorry about the mess on the screen anyways here's our wedge as price gets closer to the corner of the wedge it has to break out one direction it's not going to just keep going down like this forever it's got to have a breakout eventually so these are all tools to just help you find these priced based points of resistance and support to make entries and exits in the market so let me show you another quick example here let me try to find another wedge that i can find and maybe i'll actually go on to another coin i've done nothing but charting on bitcoin here um, let me go over to let's check out ethereum why not up the chart and find a wedge all right so i showed you a downward wedge example now here is a good example of an upward wedge so this is on ethereum versus us dollar tether this time and what i'm looking at here is the hour chart and i can see that we started an upward trend here and then boom we had some trend lines and one thing about these trend lines is you do always want to update it to the most recent swing low so obviously these first few were bouncing off of this line but then we did actually break through and see a little bit of a downward movement and then we moved it over here so we would update our trend line to right about there to the most recent swing low so you can see it played a little bit of support there boom and then this would be our most recent adjustment right there so we have that and then we also have a support of resistance that i can clearly identify we had a start of a downtrend right there okay and so you can see that this would form an upward wedge this time you have an upward trend line converging into a line of resistance at the top so here we can see as we got close to this price we bounced off of this line one more time and then we are coming back up to this resistance line now this time we didn't get rejected it could have potentially gotten rejected bounced off maybe a couple more times converged a little bit closer and then had a breakout now keep in mind that breakout could go either direction so you want to make sure you have stop losses set up and based upon you having proper risk to reward ratio set up when you're entering your trades you should be able to become a profitable trader using strategies such as this so really once you understand the concepts of support resistance trends and wedges you can really understand why and when prices are going to move up and down when they're going to slow down when they're going to have breakouts and you can use those pieces of information to make great trade entries and exits and become a profitable day trader All right, so today's video is really not going to be too complicated if you already understand how support and resistance works then it's really easy to apply those same sort of concepts and principles to trend lines and wedges but just for extra measure let me find one more wedge here i'm gonna go to xrp shout out xrp for just coming out on top on that lawsuit but anyways let me find one more wedge here i am on the hour long chart and um, let's see what we got going on it looks like xrp hasn't been moving a whole lot over the past few days real slow movement here you can see a lot of accumulation there um nothing too crazy uh, but let me go back in time a little bit and see if we can identify a past um, wedge here xrp has not been listed for that long on binance us so i don't have a lot of historical information available um so you know what let me try a different coin let me actually just go to litecoin make it nice and easy 
All right, here I am on Litecoin. I actually just switched it to the hourly chart. And here we have a pretty good example of when just upward trend is broken. So here we had the start of this huge run here. And we can see we had trend line about right there. And I identified that based on the most recent swing low there. Um, but anyways, you can see that once this was broken, that's when we had that huge price movement. Crypto winter took us here into the lows. But I'm really still trying to find one more wedge here. Oh, here we've got another upward wedge. Okay, so here we would have identified our resistance where the start of this downtrend happened. So we drew our line and then we could see we started an upward trend here. Boom, started the uptrend, would have stuck it there. Once we bounced that new one, would have stuck it there and then attached it there. And this is a great example right here because you can actually see that this one actually broke out a little bit early. You could have expected it to converge a little bit more, but this one actually broke out early here. So that just goes to show you that you can't always trust technical analysis 100%, things like news, lots of other things are going into the factors of crypto movement. So again, I've said this a million times, these are just tools to help you make decisions. So again, guys, today's super simple. We showed you how upward trend lines act as support for price action and downward trend lines will act as resistance. And as trend lines converge into the corner of a support, or a resistance line, you have to have a price breakout in either direction. And if you set up proper stop losses and risk to reward ratios, you can become a very profitable trader just by using these lines. So I know a lot of complicated information here and we're just getting started. We're really gonna get into a lot more of advanced trading stuff on Binance here as we go further and further into the series. But if you enjoyed or learned anything from this video, please drop a like on it and also subscribe to our channel that supports us so we can keep continuing to make these educational videos for you guys. If you have any questions about what we went over today, make sure to leave it in the comments or if you have another tutorial video you'd like to see make sure to also leave that in the comments so as always thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you next time